in this video. I'm gonna show you what it's like to live. This is awesome. And to eat on a cruise ship headed from South America all the way to Antarctica. I bet you this lamb never knew it would travel all the way out here to the Antarctic. And this isn't just any cruise ship. This is a cruise ship that for me cost $40,000. What do you get for all that? You're gonna find out soon. All right, this is our room. May I add something? That's $40,000 per person. I came here with my wife. So actually the whole thing is $80,000. Let's take a look and see if it's worth it. But first, let's back up. Right now, my wife and I are on a cruise line known as Silver Sea and on a ship known as Silver Wind. This whoosh is the ocean, the ocean surrounding Antarctica. It is big, beautiful, and freezing. I jumped into it the other day. Woo! <laughs> Our journey begins in Puerto Williams, progressing through the unpredictable Drake Passage to the Antarctic Peninsula, where we'll stay for four days. From there, we'll voyage to South Georgia Island, where we'll explore for three days before we head back to Puerto Williams, where our journey began. Now, a cruise ship that goes to Antarctica is very different and very special compared to your carnival cruises. These ships have to be much smaller. They have to be much more attentive to the guests, and there are a lot more excursions that are very personalized. Aboard this boat, there are only about 270 people and a similar amount of staff. That means the ratio of staff to guests is almost one to one. In this two-part series, I'm gonna be showing you what it is like practically to live on a boat for two weeks, what the food is like, and my God, there is a lot of it, and I've been here for a week, and I put on 10 pounds. It's good. You're also going to see how excursions work in Antarctica. Right behind me, you can see this hill is absolutely loaded with hundreds of Gen 2 penguins. It looks amazing. You'll see the abundant wildlife of South Georgia. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of seals out here, penguins, it's snowing, it's very magical. And I'll give you a tour of the entire ship, including four different restaurants. It's as elegant, refined, and enticing. It sounds like my Tinder profile years ago. On this video, we're gonna focus on what do you get for that $40,000 that I paid for my room on this ship, including a full day of eating with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus a room tour that cost $40,000. I'm trying to make back 5% of my investment with this video. It's not gonna work. But first, let's start the day with some breakfast. Right behind me is a restaurant known as La Terraza. Now, throughout the day, it takes three different forms. In the morning, it's a breakfast buffet. At noon, it's a lunch buffet. And in the evening, it's an Italian restaurant. Right now, it's morning, so it's breakfast, baby. Let's go. Right behind me is the buffet. Now, it's not gigantic, but it's really condensed. It's a lot of food in one small area. Let me show you around. Right here, cold items. For example, cheeses and meats. So you gotta keep in mind, with this cruise, it's a lot of Americans, it's a lot of Australians, it's British folks. It's, um, it's a certain type of palate that's not looking for super salty or super spicy food, especially in the morning. So you're not gonna get that, but you are gonna get stuff like this. Is that pickled fish? I think that's a pickled fish. Over on... Over on this side, we have fruits and nuts. Not interested. Over here, we have muesli with skim milk. I have no idea what, is that something Australian eat? What's muesli? Muesli. Muesli is a cold Swiss breakfast dish. White. It looks kind of like granola and milk that's just been hanging out for a while. Here we have fruit juice, and then we get into our main items here. They do have one hint of Asian flavor on the boat here. This is the kanji with condiments. So this back here is oatmeal. That's kanji for white people. Right here, we have rice porridge, and then they have a load of things you could put in there, including chilies, shrimp, chicken, and etc. We've got eggs, we've got hash browns, fried rice for breakfast, yes, please. Then over here, it's getting even more meaty, scrambled eggs. We've got sausage, bacon, Canadian bacon, English bacon in the USA. We like to call that ham. And then you just traverse over here to the carbohydrate section. I avoid this area. You get full too fast. It's not worth the calorie. So from here, I'm gonna grab my first course, sit down, let's try it out. Could I please have some English bacon, sir? Very nice, thank you. I've also ordered some Eggs Benedict that will be at our table soon. Let's go. Right here, we have our first breakfast course. It looks pretty dang good. Today, we're gonna be starting with the muesli. I literally never heard of this in my life. Hmm. Okay, I know what this is. This is like if you have kids, they don't finish your breakfast, you find it an hour later, and then you eat it yourself. It's soggy oats with nuts and fruit. It's decent, but right here we have something that really perplexes me. British bacon, what is it? Let's find out. American bacon is generally served in crispy strips, dang right. While British bacon, also known as rashers, it's chewier and thicker. Served in round slices, it's closer to a slice of grilled deli meat. I'm gonna try this now and decide if this deserves the title of bacon. It looks like a slice of ham dang near, but with a big old chunk of fat on the end. Mm-hmm, okay. 
ham. It was good ham. Succulent, soft, fatty. Super salty. Our final dish this morning, right here. Eggs Benedict. Ooh, that's pretty good. I asked for soft boiled. They did not disappoint. We have the hollandaise sauce on top. We have the egg soft poached. We have a piece of ham, and then we have an English muffin on the bottom too. A truly European breakfast this morning. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Warm egg yolk, super creamy hollandaise sauce, a nice bready base on the bottom there. That is delicious. And this is a very good start to breakfast. But for course two, I want a little bit of Asian persuasion. Let's go check out the kanji. Boom, it's time for round two. Right here we have some kanji with condiments. Take a big old scoop. Now I want to basically put every topping in here except for I don't know what some of these are. This is cinnamon, for example. Does cinnamon go on kanji? Wife? No. Yeah, what's that? That's ginger? Oh, I don't want that. What's this? Orange peel. What's this? Oh, garlic. I'll do garlic. Give a little bit of a sprinkle of that. Throw some chilies in there. I guarantee you this bowl of chilies has been the same fullness since this trip began. Let's go over to here. We've got shrimpies. This looks like chicken and fried onions. All right, we've got our kanji. I'm going to grab some fried rice and try it out. Boom. Course two right here. First of all, this is the kanji. Ooh, it smells good. Savory, steamy, delicious. Let's go. Wow, it's potentially a bit on the salty side. But overall, it's delicious. It does taste like they cooked the rice with chicken stock, so it's just super savory, very flavorful. There is one more Asian thing on the menu right here, fried rice. Of the entire staff on this boat, 99 of them are Filipino. Philippines know how to make dang good fried rice. Let's see if this is like that. It weirdly has like a fruity taste to it. What's fruity in the fried rice? Perhaps it's orange peel? It's a different take on fried rice, that's for sure. Luckily I have some soy sauce, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sprinkle. Here we go, this will be the perfect balance. Soy sauce is really salty. <laughs> Overall, it's okay. If you're absolutely desperate, it's passable. But the kanji, very nice. This is a nice breakfast because there are so many different things to try. You could technically go to this breakfast buffet 14 days in a row and try something new each time, which is nice because when you're on this boat, you do have to go to this buffet 14 times in a row. Actually, there are some other breakfast options, but this is the main deal right here. From here, we're gonna go to the room and give you a room tour of a room that costs $40,000. Let's check it out. All right, this is our room. May I add something? That's $40,000 per person. So actually, the whole thing is $80,000. Let's take a look and see if it's worth it. Way. So there are about six different types of rooms on this vessel, and ours is like the third nicest. But it's a good room. It's an expensive room. It even has a, a lobby. From the entryway, let's head toward the bedroom. First, you go into a walk-in closet right here with two sides, a side for him and her. Here, they have life jackets. The only time you wear these is in case of an emergency. They will ring the alarm seven times in a row, and then there's a certain room you have to run to with your life jacket. This will sound a secondary alarm if you try to steal it. No, actually, I'm not sure what that is. From here, let's head into the bathroom. I know it's very small in here. It's quite condensed compared to like a normal hotel room, but it's pretty big for a boat. From here, we're leaving the bathroom and heading into the bedroom. So I would say the bedroom is kind of small, compact, and quaint, and that is to make more room for the living area. And luckily, our room has both. A lot of smaller suites have basically a bedroom that extends into a living room. There's a small window here. This is mainly good for light and not really as much of a viewing window. Right here, there is a vanity. You can turn these lights on, put on makeup. There's a television, but they have an even bigger television, which I'll show you soon. Now, let's head into the living area. Through this door, a perfect place to do some reading, to go on your computer, to surf TikTok. As we move forward, we are brought right here to our dining nook. This is where we have most of our meals. They bring fresh fruit every day in this giant impractical dish. But it's still very nice. When you're on a boat for two weeks straight, you can't exactly go to a convenience store when you have the munchies. And they know you're gonna have the munchies, and so they have these right here. A variety of snacks. Let me show you my favorite one right here. Now, I know these might look like ordinary cashews, but no. These are truffle cashews. I've eaten about 10 pounds of those. If you're noticing extra chins, blame the food on this ship, because I can't stop. That leads me over here to our beverage station. First of all, coffee. That ought to jumpstart my brain a bit. You might also notice bottles. Some of my favorite things to drink, including Jack Daniels. If you don't like what they give you when you get here, you can just ask for other bottles. They have basically everything. And I know what you're thinking. For a bottle of Jack Daniels, that must cost an extra $250. No, free. I mean, after you pay for all the money for the boat. Down here, the friage. The fridge is stocked with beer, soft drinks. They always have ice. Every day I come in here, I open this. Someone's refilled the ice and put it in the fridge. Wow. 
Beyond that, they have every type of cocktail tool, so you can make your own cocktails if you want. I thought I'd have to hide my drinking on this boat. I got here, and man, people put them down. From here, we're going outside to our balcony. We don't spend a ton of time out here because it is roughly 32 to 34 degrees. Not crazy cold, but not exactly sun tanning weather. Let's go take a look at the view that $40,000 gets you. This is awesome. Obviously only a handful of people get a room with this type of a view on the ship and it is really incredible and something I try to take advantage of each morning as I wake up walking out into the sunlight and taking in another day here in Antarctica. Right here, look, a giant freaking iceberg. I just wanna take a chunk off it and put it in my Jack Daniels. All right, let's head back inside. From the patio, we're coming over here to the living room. Right here, we have an L-shaped couch, a table in the middle, and you can either hang out, dine, have a drink, or you can watch some television. Right here, you can see our journey so far. We started in Puerto Williams, Chile. We went through the Drake Passage and down to Antarctica, where we spent about four days. Now we're headed to South Georgia Island, where we'll spend another four days. But let's back up a little bit and talk about the TV. Every day, it's gonna give you a schedule of what's happening. This is where you get messages. This is where you can make reservations for restaurants. This is your information hub while you're on the boat. So in just a moment, I'm going to be ordering the room service. I'm going to get a lot of food and you're going to see what room service looks like on a boat. And not only can you get room service, you can just ask for whatever kind of drink you want. You can literally say, hey, can I get a bottle of champagne and a glass of orange juice to make mimosas in my room? They can't say no, I assume. They haven't yet. Hi there, could I order some food, please? Boom, the room service has arrived. Hi, how you doing? So every time they come in here, it's like a whole show. They make up the table, they take everything off, they put down a tablecloth. It is very fancy. Alas, we have our champagne. Guys, check it out. This is room service on a boat. It looks pretty dang good. Let's begin with this right here. They call an avocado tumbler. So there's a layer of avocado on top, and then I don't even know what's underneath it. Maybe I should read the TV. The guacamole tumbler has avocado, red chili peppers, garlic, lemon juice, crab meat, sour cream, and lemon zest. I'm gonna try to get a scoop, like a piece of cake, I guess. You can see the crab on this side, some lettuce, a thin layer of avocado. Very creamy and avocado-y. And then a bunch of crab underneath that. They should include some chips with it. I like it. From there, we revert back to the original mission to have a mo. Jason Mimosa. To have a mimosa. Right here I have my champagne. Here, the orange juice. Marry them together. And that is a mimosa, my friends. Cheers. Ching. Mm, it's basically healthy. Next dish, the duo of melon and bruschetta. I'm gonna have a little bit of a hit of melon. So fresh, one weekend. Now for some prosciutto. Thin, chewy, oily, meaty, delicious. A nice, strong flavor that requires a nice, strong drink to wash it down. <sighs> Here we have some linguine. This is homemade linguine pasta, fresh pesto sauce, French green beans, potato cubes, 26-month DOP Parmesan cheese, extra virgin olive oil, and pine nuts. Also, it's green. Give it a little bit of a roll. Oh yeah, take a look at that. Cheers. Nice al dente noodles. The pesto sauce is a combination of basil and extra virgin olive oil, and it is fragrant, fresh, and delicious. I like that a lot. It's like eating fresh lawn clippings, but even better. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to our main course right here. Filet de bouffe. This is corn-fed filet mignon. I ordered medium rare, but it has been sitting here for 10 minutes. Let's see. Yeah, I waited too long. It's become a medium well, but that's all right. It might still be delicious. Hmm. Beautifully seasoned, a nice hit of salt, very tender. I love it. I did get some mushroom sauce in case the steak was bad, but it's actually quite good. Oh, that's delicious too. Finally, we're moving on to our dessert right here. The creme brulee. I'm gonna give it a big hit. Oh, okay. It's a lot more solid than I thought. I think the whole of this ship is made out of whatever this is, just in case we hit an iceberg. Jesus. Oh, I finally got it. The sugary layer on top of the creme brulee should caramelize and turn brown. I've never seen one like this where it still actually looks like crystallized sugar. Looks a little bit underdone. Medium rare I meant for the steak, not for the dessert. Cheers. It's turned into like a toffee or something. It's stuck in my teeth. Oh. Feels like when you're eating a Jolly Rancher, it's gummy. Well, everything was going really good. 
The inside, though, it is creamy and delicious, like a delicious sweet custard. But the inside and the top are supposed to work together. Well, that's how you know that I'm not being paid by this company because that kind of sucks. From here, I'm gonna finish eating our room service and then we're gonna head to the most expensive restaurant on this boat, the only restaurant that charges you money. Before going to the most expensive restaurant on this ship, we have come here, Dolce Vita. It's a cocktail lounge that plays live music and has live food, dead food, but delicious food. Here, early evening, they have something called canapé. Now, if you've never heard of canapé, it is this. A type of hors d'oeuvre, a small prepared and often decorative food consisting of a small piece of bread or cracker wrapped or topped in some savory food held in the fingers and eaten in one bite. For the martini, I've decided to do something a little bit different. This is a cucumber martini. Now, for those who haven't watched the show very long, the cucumber is my least favorite food in the world. But what if you add something I absolutely love to it? Alcohol. Let's get a little bit of a sip. Didn't work. That was a mistake. Okay, let's talk about the food. This food right here is known as a coconut shrimp. Cheers. Well, juicy, bouncy, meaty, and a hint of coconut. I like it. Chase it with a martini, flavor with cucumber. The next time I'm tempted to drink midday on a Monday, I'm gonna think about that and it'll get me through it. All right, right here we have a tiny cubed omelet. Delicious. Egg, cheese, and peppers. It's exactly like a little cubed omelet. Right here we have like kind of a crackery shell to put stuff into. We have a delicious cream on the inside and some caviar on top of that. Let's throw it back. Crackery, creamy, smoky, delicious. I love it. So that is kind of pay. But from here, we're headed to the most expensive restaurant, the fanciest, most fine diningest restaurant on this boat, Le Dame. With only about six tables, it is very exclusive. And right now, we're gonna go inside and see what this dining experience is like. It is time for luxury, the Arctic. I mean, Ant the Antarctic. I'm not redoing it. Right here, it says elegant, refined, and enticing. Ooh, it sounds like my Tinder profile years ago. Let's go inside, check out the menu. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Immediately when you arrive, they bring you a glass of champagne. Very nice. Ah, it's like wine, but with bubbles. All right, I've been given the menu. We have the meal menu and the wine menu. Now, I did say that this is the most expensive restaurant on this boat, and that is because it is the only restaurant that charges you money. It costs about $60 per person to dine here. Additionally, wine costs money. Oh, it's bread time. We're getting breaded up. The hardest part about being on this boat is all the bread and butter. There's a lot of, oh my God, do you see what I'm saying? Whoosh, that's like a quarter pound of butter. So that is our pre-appetizer, but the menu is broken down into a few different sections. Appetizer, they call them nos entrées. I don't know, French. They have caviar, they have foie gras, they have something called Mon Jardin Pontier. I don't know what that is, so I will not order it. And they have so many different things to order from here. You could get soup, main course, dessert. What really sets this place apart is the view. And there it is, right there. It is amazing. Staring off into the Arctic Ocean with icebergs in the distance. There's absolutely nothing like it. So we have our bread, I've ordered some wine, and our food will be arriving shortly. So this is our first course right here, the caviar, nice and chilled. Usually when you get caviar, you get some kind of a little pancake like this, I believe it's called a belmini, and then you get some kind of a cream to go with it. But here they additionally have some parsley, some onion, some egg white, some egg yolk, potato slices, they have some cream, and then my favorite part is a shot of vodka. The vodka just comes with the whole lot. All right, here we go, my first bite, cheers. Briny, fatty, delicious, I love that. Next, I wanna build a little bit of a pancake castle. Right here, I have my little bellini. I'm gonna stack that with a load of caviar. I'm gonna hit that with some onion, and finally top it all with a little bit of this cream and parsley. So this is my shot, and this is my chaser. Cheers. Mm. Indulgent and delicious. I feel like I'm back in Russia. So that is our first course. Now we're waiting on the soup. All right, right here we have our second course. Voila. Wow. Hey. Bon appetit. Thank you very much. You. All right, folks, right here. This is a truffle porcini mushroom bisque type thing. It looks okay, but it smells amazing. I'm gonna take a big spoonful. It's amazing. Rich, decadent, creamy, mushroomy, and full of truffle aroma. A very nice second course indeed. Alas, our final course has arrived. Looks perfect, thank you so much. Right here we have our main course. I believe it is a lamb chop. It's thick, meaty, there's sprigs of herbs, and it's cooked so pink and deliciously on the inside. Mm. 
I bet you this lamb never knew it would travel all the way out here to a place few lambs have been before, the Antarctic. And the amazing flavors too, it is so soft and tender. I taste time. All other things. <laughs> Lots of stuff in there. It is so delicious. So this concludes our fine dining meal. Today I'm not gonna get a dessert because I put on about 10 pounds in one week already on this ship. It's not that I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to decrease the rate at which I am gaining weight. That is the problem. This is Three Chin Sunny and I will see you at the conclusion. Boom, that is the end of the video. That is what it's like spending $40,000 for one two week trip for one person going to Antarctica and South Georgia. Now, in the next video, we're gonna be talking more about how the cruise actually works. How do the excursions work? What do you get to see when you go on land? What kind of animals can you see? What kind of animals can you eat? But first I want to ask you, are you surprised by the price? In the beginning, I thought it was outrageously expensive, and it is. But also, it takes a lot of money to run a ship like this. On this boat, there's about 240 passengers and about 240 crew. And then you have to think about all the workers that you see, like the expedition team, the butlers, the crew members, the captain. But then there's all the people that you don't see, the maintenance team, people in the engine room, people who are shoveling coal into a furnace to keep the ship going. I assume that's how it works. And beyond that, every time they go back, back to shore, they are reloading and restocking the ship with tons of food, booze, that's mainly what I'm concerned about, but sheets, blankets. So let me know, what do you think? Is it worth it? And come back for the next video when I show you how a cruise works going from South America to Antarctica. We'll see you then. That's my new sign off. I just say I see you then. Uh, no. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Gonna take a swim. Dang it, the net. Oh, hot tub. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.